Welcome back to Life Journey. Glory to God International. I'm your host, Theophilus Fernandez. I'm so glad to took the opportunity to listen to the enchanted word which will save your soul. I still need your help. Subscription, thumbs up, comment, right? And God will bless you. Because God is, is not able to do exceed above all we ask or think according to power that work in us. My message today is from Romans chapter 1, to Romans chapter 9, verse 1, and 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Father God, bless this message right now. Somebody that have one of these conscience, Lord, bless them right now. Satan, I bind you. Witches, I bind you right now. The blood juice against you right now. All the demon and witches are on YouTube. Hallelujah. I bind you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's Romans chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience of who bear me with me witnessing the Holy Ghost. Hey, glory to God. In, in 1 Timothy 4, chapter verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with an iron. My message is, what kind of conscience do you have? Yes, what kind of conscience do you have? Do you have a, the, the Holy Ghost conscience or do you have a seer with an iron? Now, when I look at this, this verse of scripture, it draws me back to, to Romans chapter 1. He goes to God, that God has given a reprobated mind. But my message today is, what kind of conscience do you have? He glory to God. Now, what kind of conscience do you have? Do you have the Holy Ghost or a seal without an iron? Now, what kind of conscience? The first five, glory to God, going to be about C's. And the other one, conscience, seal without an iron, is about S. So let's deal with glory to God sees first. The Holy Ghost conscience, glory to God, is we concern about people's needs. Hallelujah. Like how I concern about the welfare of people getting to heaven and shunning hell. What well, I say, my conscience want to help people to get to heaven and not to go to hell. They glory to God. That's about number two. We show compassion toward other people's feelings. We don't cuss people out. We don't get on people's nerve. We don't give people a piece of our mind. But we have compassion. We have love toward other feel other people's feelings. Hey, glory to God. That's why I, 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 I know this, my friend. You got to bridle your tongue. The Bible says if a, if a man seems to be religious and bridle not his tongue, this man's religion is in vain. Number three, we compel men toward the kingdom of God. If you have the Holy Ghost like I have the Holy Ghost, my friend, my mission, hey, glory to God, is for the master. The master, glory to God, is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ said, glory to God, all things were made by him. So my, my, my mission is to compel men. The Bible says, if I be lifted from the earth, I draw all men unto him. So every time I get on YouTube, my friend, my mission is to compel men for the kingdom of God. Not to get kingdom of riches. Hallelujah. Glory to God for the kingdom of God. And the fourth thing, we don't we don't commit habitual sin. If you have the Holy Ghost, my friend, Paul say, I lie not. My conscience be a witness in the Holy Ghost. So if you have the Holy Ghost, my friend, you don't do habitual sin. What habitual sin? I'm so glad you asked. It's sin like smoking, cussing. Drinking, getting drunk, he go to God, and you fornicating, and you committing adultery. Those are habitual sin, habits, habit sin. You cussing, it's a habit. You smoking weed, it's a habit. You smoking cigarette, it's a habit. Hallelujah! If you have the Holy Ghost, because your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, you don't defile the temple. The Bible says, "Follow the temple." God gonna defile you. Defile you. And the last one, number five, we confront the weak, hallelujah, and those who need help can help themselves. Yeah, we, comf we comforted the weak, hallelujah. The Bible says he that, is, he that is, is spiritual, hallelujah, help those that are weak. So if you are a Holy Ghost filled person, you got to fulfill all three or five of these, my friend. Hey, glory to God, you must be concerned. You must have compassion. You must compel. You must not commit habitual sin. Because the Bible says, my friend, unto him that able to keep you from falling. If you have the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, if your seed remain in you, you cannot sin. There's a nature of sin. 
Because Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? Hey, glory to God. Now, the conscience seal without iron, and, and we don't, we don't, we comfort the weak and those that who can't help themselves. Now, the conscience seal without iron, as, 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 as Paul would say, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having the conscience seal without iron. A person been married five times. They don't have a conscience anymore. Because the Bible says those who not commit adultery, a person that keep on committing fornication don't have a conscience anymore. So in, in 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 5, the Bible says he won't let Satan destroy that flesh so that spirit can be saved. So the person don't have, don't have a conscience. Hey Amen. See, that means a person drinking hot coffee so much the tongue has been gnawed. You can't feel nothing. Your tongue been 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 worn out. That's why a person, I don't understand people, you, hey, you're 25 years old, you marry a 60-year-old man. You marry a 70-year-old man. The man is worn out. He's a seed and sentence. He ready for the grave. Hallelujah. I don't care how many Viagra he take. Hallelujah. He can't bring back the youth. Only God can do it. God did it to Sarah and, Ab and Abraham. He brought back her youth. And glory to God. But you're not God. So see ya. Conscience without iron. Sin without a, a, a conscience. You kill somebody through hate and don't come back and apologize. You cut somebody out in the parking lot. You don't come back and say, forgive me. Your conscience be sealed without an iron. Sex is sex chain without conscience. You a man, you won't turn a woman. Your woman won't turn a man. And you live in a bisexual lifestyle. And you have the conscience? Conscience sealed without iron. Here you are serving Satan without a conscience. You, you, those are Illuminatis. You, those that are glory to God, Mason. How can you be a preacher and a Mason? How can you be a teacher and a, how can you be a judge and be a Mason? You taking bribe. How can you be a police officer and be a Mason? We supposed to serve the community. How can you be glory to God a thirty-three degree Mason and being a preacher? You can't serve two master. And these people, they might preach the gospel, but don't have no conscience. Amen. And, and also, glory to God, we does not, we does not care about sacredness of God or things of God. Come on. In Daniel the fifth chapter, verse three and five, then they brought the gold vessel that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and the princes, his wives, and the concubine drank in them. They was having party in the sacred thing that the priests used. And what happened, preacher? They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and the silver of brass and iron and of wood and of a stone. In that same hour, what happened, preacher? In the same hour came for the finger of men hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the pastry of the wall of the king of palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote Tila Tika Ula Kufasi. That means that it, your your kingdom be gonna be divided. The Bible says about Belteshazzar died that same that same night. So what you saying, preacher? I'm saying that things that are sacred are sacred. Like the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible is sacred. You don't throw the Bible down. You don't put the Bible in places you are not to be. And also, hey, glory to God, in Deuteronomy, we, we sacrifice the idols and don't care. In Deuteronomy, the 32, 17, they sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to God whom they knew not, to the new God that, that came newly upon, upon your fathers, fear not. So they sacrifice unto demons. They are people. Yes, I said, there are people, glory to God, that are ignorant of who and whose they are serving. The Bible say, glory to God, Deuteronomy 32, 17, they sacrifice unto devils and not to God, to the God whom they knew not, to the new gods, they came newly up, whom your father feared. Look at, look at our society right now. Glory to God, women that's not married, they serving, they serving their body parts. They bringing babies without getting married. It's a spirit. You worship sex and savior. And also, glory to God, they serve unto devils. But I say, 
listen, but I say unto that the thing which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God, and I would not you you follow. And that is the first Corinthian ten twenty. But I say that the thing which the Gentiles sacrifice, what a Gentile? The Gentile are people, glory to God, that do, that don't know God. He glory to like some of us. Some of us are Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to God. And I wouldn't that you should have fellowship with devils. That's why the Bible says, how can two walk together except they are greedy? If a person is not saved, you should not try to let them convert you. You try to convert them through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, if you are a sinner, if you are saved, and you're dating a man unsaved, get him saved first before you even marry him. What I say? Hallelujah. Let me say it slowly. If you are a Christian, you ain't got no business fellowshipping with those that are darkness. Because what going to happen, my friend? He's going to tempt you, and the temptation going to be so much that you can't resist. You're going to end up going to a hotel with him. You're going to end up, glory to God, sleeping with him. And you're going to say, come on. How can, how can light fellowship with darkness? Amen. If you, listen, get him saved first before you say, I do. Don't try to convert him because he's going to fool you. And then you get married, going to take off his mask and say, oops, you goofed. I'm just telling you from experience. I see Christian girls marry heathens. Christian girls marry Satan. And if you are a Christian, you're going to be in this marry no sinner. You're going to be in this marry no Muslim. You're going to be in this marry no seven-day Adventist. You're going to be in this marry people of the people's temple. It, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they are agreeing? The Bible says, come up from among them and be separate, say, Lord, touch that unclean thing, and I receive you unto myself. What are you preaching about, preacher? What, hallelujah, what kind of conscience do you have? Now, there's some people that have no conscience at all. They are Christians. Somebody get evicted, you take their stuff. And you, you're supposed to help them. The Bible says, be not forgetful, entertain angel. Stranger, because we entertain angel unaware. That stranger you pass by might be an angel and you treat him bad. Hallelujah. What kind of conscience? Be honest. You have. Do you have a Holy Ghost conscience or a seer without an odd eye? I tell people, if you've been married 10 times, you don't have a conscience at all. Because number one, you don't know how to love. Number two, you don't read the Bible. Number three, you don't care what nothing what God say. Because you're going to do what you want to you wanna do. Why? Because you don't have a conscience. Your conscience is supposed to beat you. If you cut somebody out, your conscience ought to tell you, go back and apologize. If not, you got a bad conscience.